welcome to Lit Up 365 Spring Session 6, The Power of Doing. Uh, this is our last session for spring. Next session we'll be digging into summer and I'm really excited. So the last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about doing, but I want to talk about the concept of resistance because as we start to move into action, sometimes we can, we're met with resistance. And so I want to cover that today by talking about why aren't you following your inspiration when we have these dreams and possibilities and, and amazing inspirations in front of us, why don't we follow them? Um, and, what I want to do is dig into that on multiple levels. And a lot of what I'll talk about today is expectation. Um, so we're going to cover why we aren't working um, toward that inspiration, why we resist it or avoid it or lose track of it. So one of the things I want to say is resistance can be uncomfortable. I, and we need to understand that this discomfort when we feel like life is fail, our life is failing, it's not failing. It's where we have that feeling that's an internal driving force of the brain that is longing for change. And so it feels like failure, but it's not actual failure. It's because we want it better. Think about it. Every time that we feel like we fail at something, it's because we are wanting something better. So if you're feeling discontent or discomfort or like things aren't going your way it just is a sign that your brain believes something more is possible and so it, it creates this discomfort to say this isn't enough I want more and that's healthy that's healthy for the human brain so first of all let's understand that when that feeling comes it's like oh this means I need to take a step now here's the issue when we when we be, get the idea of taking a step that the the primal brain if it kicks in it doesn't measure what we do and don't do it doesn't measure whether or not it's going to trick that amygdala off potential gain it measures fear of loss and so there are a lot of things we strived for that we wanted especially as children and we were told we couldn't have them so sometimes just to desire more can can create that fear of loss so what we want to do is not combat that we don't want to push against it and try and fight because our conscious brain will never win against our subconscious brain it's just there's not as much of it right at only 3 billion of 86 billion neurons um but not only that but the the subconscious brain is our supercomputer so we want to use it in our favor we don't want to go to battle against it so we want to start um, releasing the struggle and use success to motivate further success. But but we need to um, let go of expectation in that. And so that's what I want to dig into today is the misuse of an expectation. So I'm going to begin that with the misuse of negative expectation. And so I'm going to go through and talk about negative expectations. And these are probably things that you've experienced that that you yourself and say oh yeah I can relate to that and so I just want to start here so first of all the first negative expectation of the brain is that it's not safe to change to go for big things and again this is what I mentioned that we we sometimes have gone for things and they haven't gone our way and sometimes that's caused pain so now the brain is trying to protect us by saying it's not safe to go big just settle just be comfortable just stay where you are right uh, the other thing is expecting the worst. So we might expect failure, but we might also expect other people to push back against us, or we might doubt society's ability to grow, or there's so many ways to expect the worst. Uh, there's, we can say, I'm not enough, or it's not enough or the world isn't enough, right? But what we do is we separate ourselves from our true self. And we do this actually not because the fear is actually being enough. We do it because we, if we separate ourselves from our true self, from doing big things, we have less responsibility. And we all come from being children. And it's scary 
they're the one of the biggest transitions we face and and a lot of adults never do face it is moving out of child parent relationships and into just mere adult relationships so we tend to um parent other people and have them parent us this is what advice is this is what helping is or guidance right is where we're saying okay i'm in a position above you so i'm going to help you but when we c can meet everyone equally we then have to take responsibility for our own life no one's going to rescue me no one's going to bail me out and no one's and i'm not going to rescue anyone else um i just did a video for this new um nonprofit that i started and that dynamics perfect because i'm not going to go out and say please rescue me please save me please please do this for me in the past i would have done that i because i didn't know the other way now i'm saying let's build let's let's collaborate let's get together and do something that gives people the resources to help them have a different life i don't want to rescue people in addiction recovery i want to help i want to provide resources because i know that they can do it themselves so um we will do this focus on other people to avoid focusing on the work we need to do for ourselves and this is a big one to say okay if if you're a person that wants to help other people a lot it may be that you don't want to look at your own growth and it's only that fear it's not a thing to judge ourselves for it's just it's just that fear somewhere along the line we we learned it wasn't safe to take up that responsibility um, when we get into it's not enough, we're trying to control it. We're trying to create perfection. I talk about this all the time. I This is the biggest thing I had to learn. When I first, you know, it wasn't even a year ago, I couldn't, I couldn't stand the thought of looking into a camera on a computer and talking to people because... I wanted it to be perfect. I, I sat in meetups for four years. I taught classes for another several years before that. And I could stand up in front of groups of people. And in the beginning, that was hard because I wanted it to be perfect. I, I wanted it to, um, everything, every word out of my mouth to be flawless. And it's interesting because in meetup groups, I, I never was correcting myself. I wasn't, I mean, I, if I said something wrong, I'd correct it, but I wasn't trying to erase that part. But the minute I went to video, I, I wanted to take out every single imperfection and I was losing my humanness in it. And so it wasn't perfect in the beginning, but this is the thing we, we're not going to do it. Anything new we do, we're going to do poorly at first. We're going to get better as we do it. So it's important to realize, okay, I need to just start because it's not going to be perfection. I'm not going to be able to control it. I just need to try and, and think of it as an experiment, right? Uh, another uh, negative use of expectation is excuses. I would, but, right? I, we, we think about, oh, I need to have all this said. I talk about this all the time. You can't organize your life to live your visions, your inspirations. You need to just live them and then your life will organize itself. So the excuses are, don't always feel like excuses. They, they can be really good reasons, but just finding a little bit, can I do a little tiny bit today? The power of doing is in saying, okay, if I can just do the tiniest thing, if I just make a list, um, I've, I work really hard. I work like all day every day especially with social distancing and so occasionally my brain will be like i don't want to do this anymore but it's all i have in front of me it's my entire life building these businesses and so what i do is i find a little thing i can do i pause and say what can i do because time time spent away from the doing is devastating to my brain chemistry so i really it's really important to take just even a small step can i do a list can i go over and also find the thing that motivates you so for me listening to educational videos stimulates my desire to do things when i'm learning things so i'm i have a bunch of courses i'm taking on marketing and
recommend I'm taking one on the science of happiness uh, from Yale and there's another one from Berkeley that's um, Buddhism and psychology and so when I listen to those all of a sudden I start to spark because I'm stimulating that prefrontal cortex so um, it may not feel like excuses it may feel like really good reasons I don't have the time but we can all find five minutes ten minutes we can decide I maybe I don't need this in my life maybe I need this instead um, the last thing I want to talk about negative expectations is the what-ifs we can't predict where our creation is going so the what-ifs don't they they have no bearing all we have is what we're doing today and that's what i want to dig into is what kind of doing is the right kind of doings there are a lot of what ifs out there and none of us can predict any of it our current situation there's no way we could predict what we're experiencing right now in the world and so we the what ifs are speculation and they could be right or they may not but basing our what i talk about is fear-based decision making basing our decision on what bad thing might happen or even what good thing might happen is all a fear response in the brain and that that again is a thing that can stall us and and it also leads into i want to talk about positive expectation because what ifs can be uh the same in that we we might um move in the wrong direction or um have this positive expectation and then be disappointed by results um another positive expectation that's uh, detrimental is thinking we have the best solution this is control i know the direction this should go and i think this is the biggest one if you are a person that has control issues i really want you to hear this concept of thinking you have the best solution look at your life right now is it where you expected it to be is it better than it used to be none of us know where we're going for sure and when we say when we bring it into this narrow scope of here's the solution we miss all of this all of this grandeur and beauty of infinite possibility i have no idea I, there's no way I, who I was even a year ago could imagine where I am today. I couldn't, I couldn't even wrap my head around it. And I say that all the time. Life will be exponentially better than anything you can imagine today. But you have to abandon your decision of what you expect it to be. That positive expectation you have. Because you only live in this moment anyway, right? So um, there, there was this study at Stanford where they took um the student body and split it the the senior student body and split it and they had half of the student body imagine the best outcome imagine what they do after graduation what career would you have what will your family life be like so they said we want you to spend time imagining that every day and this is that concept of um pretending like um envisioning yourself right vision boards all these concepts and so they were they were testing that theory and they took this half of the student body and they said okay we want you to imagine the second half they said i don't want you thinking about the future at all if you catch yourself doing it stop do not imagine where you'll be after and they what they found in the study is that students that fantasized about the future that imagine the future um or even just visualized it were 80 percent likely less likely 80 percent less likely to do their homework because they'd already reaped the reward the brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not i talk about this all the time with scary movies they wouldn't scare us if the brain didn't believe that it was in that it or someone was in danger what makes us trigger that fear response is that the brain views that and thinks it's real so positive expectation is probably making you 80 percent less likely to do what you need to do it's the cause of um stagnation another stagnation is waiting for our good to arrive waiting for everything else this again can be that parent thing waiting for somebody to show up and and do something for us or it can be um 
waiting for the opportunity or waiting for the door to open. Um, it, we have this thing where we often wait and waiting should never be just waiting. Now, rushing forward is equally bad. Overwork, uh, working too hard in the wrong direction is a misuse of positive expectation as well. But on this other end, instead of ever waiting, let yourself be observing that if you're not moving, you're observing so that you're never just in a waiting state because waiting is stagnation. Um, another um, misuse is that we, what we know now, or even is thinking that we know what or even why we're doing what we're doing. And this is a huge one. Everyone talks about what's your why, but we don't know our why. We, the, the most powerful part of the brain is when we go, you know, I don't know why I need to do this. I just know I do. And then on the other side, we go, oh, that's why, right? Because if we already know, it's not expansion. It, it, everything that we know right now, we are living the best life we can by that knowledge. So, uh, so we are living the best we can possibly live according to what we know now. So what it is, what we're moving into is I'm willing to abandon the expectation and have an idea, a general idea, but I want to be in this moment because expectation exists in the future and it separates us from our good. That if we're like, oh, okay, when this happens, this will be it this is where I'll be happy. Probably not on the camera. This is where I'll be happy out here. And then our brain is like, oh, well, I must not be happy because that's where my happiness is, is in the future. So instead we want to say, okay, this is the future I want, but what am I doing today toward it? Right? We've, we've talked about that a lot, a lot. And, um, this is where I want to talk about that when we're taking this step, we do like like doing is taking big steps we want to take big steps but which step do we want to take and this is where i want to give us some a re-clarify the con the difference between fantasy dreams and visions um remember that fantasizing thinking about the future um uh saying that that's where your happiness is uh fantasy while we're in the fantasy the brain thinks it's really happening so it's happy that's what that's what diminished the motivation of those college students is their brain was already in the happy place because they were fantasizing about it it's a drug it's serotonin it relieves stress but it also puts our good away from us because at some point I talk about this all the time where they talk about visualization and people wanting a BMW and going and sitting in the car in the dealership. At some point, you have to get out of the car and your brain goes, see, it's not mine. And so it's a temporary high that crashes. And so we live this roller coaster effect and then are told that's natural. That's the way we're supposed to live, which is which is not true. So fantasizing about the outcome will will never help us and this is really important this was a big thing for me me to realize with doing vision so it's understanding that fantasy is imagining the event in a way that only feels good while you're imagining it right so we're just thinking of this best outcome of that perfect happily ever after it it and we're not creating it to our our reality right now. Um, I do remind people too that dreams um, they are rest and digest driven. Um, so what the brain does is while we sleep, of course, that hippocampus is organizing everything that happened during the day. But what it's saying is, where are my threats, and how do I resolve those threats? How do I uh, resolve? my financial issue, my relationship issue, my work issue. Uh, these are our tigers. And so the brain is going to sleep going, I have these stressors. And so I'm going to try and resolve them, but it's only accessing current consciousness. It's accessing, um, history. So our 
family line, the, the neurons we adopted, as well as our personal history, so our personal experience, and the current environment. And it's saying what it's it's taking all that and it is a calculator. It's like that subconscious mind in the dreams is a super calculator. But if we're looking at those dreams as prophetic, we're not taking full advantage of the possibility of dreams and how to use them. <clears throat> um, dreams are good for measuring where you are right now. They're the current consciousness. Vision is possibility. And it's beyond our knowing. And this week we're going to really get into how to use that to take steps to be in a doing state. We we did this with reverse goal setting. It's it's that same concept that we want to move in a way that propels us forward. We don't want to rush forward in the wrong direction. What we want to do is take meticulous steps in the right direction. And I talk about that, that the summer is coming and this is where we do our hard work, but we want to work hard in the right way so that we're not doing arduous effort for nominal result, right? This is what I talk about all the time when we're peeling that onion is we're doing all this hard work to get very little result. What we want to do is work smart do small amounts of work that yield big results and so that's where we're going to be doing this week or this <clears throat> pardon me that's where we're going to be doing this next two weeks and then um on june 20th we'll go ahead and um dig into summer so i hope you enjoy the exercises and i will look forward to seeing you on june 20th for our summer session i hope everyone has a beautiful day